At Johns Hopkins Heart and Vascular Institute, we have a traditional tripartite mission, and that includes superlative patient care, it includes a discovery mission, discovering how to prevent and treat cardiac disease, and scaling that on a worldwide basis. And finally, educating the next generation. Any cardiac surgeon recognizes the complex care of a patient with, uh, who's had or having cardiac surgery is a team effort and that it really takes a village to take care of a patient. I would estimate that as many as two or three hundred people are involved in the care of a patient during and after cardiac surgery. And so you have to get that team working together and all pulling the oars in the same direction. I think having a collaborative approach with all of our team members impacts the patient significantly because of how complex and acutely ill they can be. It's helped us to improve and be able to do some forms of treatment that we haven't been able to do in the past and we're able to provide the most optimal care for them. Everybody can't be well versed in every single thing so I think having specialists from each different essentially body system, um, look at every patient, gives the patient the best potential to get out of the hospital and continue living their life after they get through their cardiac surgery. We have a robust structural heart program at Johns Hopkins. In particular, the mitral and tricuspid program is a strong program and uh, our strengths include the fact that we are a high volume program. Uh, and we've looked at this and published this and we all know in our field that volume and outcome is very well tightly correlated. And furthermore, that high volume of patients provides us a substrate upon which we can learn from and we can carry out clinical research, we can develop novel devices and we can make our care even better for those patients. There are many benefits of mitral valve repair compared to mitral valve replacement. In the short term, the operative mortality and morbidity is significantly lower for repair compared to replacement. And then over the long term, the patients don't have to be on an anticoagulation and the patients can, the valve will last a very long time, so they do not need a re-replacement either. Also, it benefits them because we preserve their native valve so that we preserve their native ventricular function as well, so it's beneficial for them physiologically as well. The mission of the CTEF program is to help care for patients who have this disease process. These patients are really sick, but they have a potentially curable disease. If we get to it at the right time and we intervene on it in the right way, we have the opportunity to completely and dramatically change these patients' lives. And in some cases, we're able to return them to their normal course of life. Our heart transplant program has changed dramatically over the past year. Really what that means is when patients come in the door, we have found methods to number one, support them, and then find uh, methods to get them a heart or a durable device. Over the past year, there's 30 or more patients that may not have survived that now are doing well and at home and have an excellent quality of life. And I think that is what the revolution is, is finding ways to support patients using creative strategies and just through will and excellent multidisciplinary care, we're able to um, get these patients through. Well, the collaboration here is like no other institution, not only in the Heart and Vascular Institute, we also have collaboration and research. In our laboratory over the past two decades, we've been focusing on adenosine triphosphate sensitive potassium channel openers. We have worked to determine the components of the channel that are responsible for myocardial protection. So pharmacologically opening these channels, we can mimic ischemic preconditioning. The one in our early phase clinical trial right now is called diazoxide. It is felt to be a specific mitochondrial KATP channel opener. We've shown benefit using that drug in multiple animal models ranging from subcellular level to large animal models and obtained FDA approval and then IRB approval at our own institution to perform a phase one safety and feasibility trial. So cardiac surgery is moving in a very positive direction. The volume is growing, the heart transplantation volume is growing. We have a number of very eager and interested students, residents, fellows interested in research and improving care of our patients. So all of that can only get better in the future with innovation and new ideas and eager and interested people.
It's exciting to be a part of an institution that has had such a good track record of producing leaders in the field. And then I get to come to work and be trained by these, you know, leaders and legends. To take that training with you and go to other places and be able to um, use everything that you've learned, that's exciting. We at Hopkins think of ourselves as being in the forefront. I know there's a lot of other great institutions across the United States and the world, but we think of ourselves in the forefront of technology and excellence in patient care. What I'm most excited about is being able to offer the full armamentarium of cardiac surgery to patients. And when you have those foundational people and things in place, you can really push the envelope in terms of outcomes and volumes, and that's exactly where we are right now. It's a very exciting time and uh, we don't know exactly what the future holds but we certainly believe that part of it will be invented here.